Hello, I'm Amy Schulke of VanillaArts.com, and today we're coloring lazy gummy bears using basic Copic blending technique. This beginner level project was originally developed for my local Copic club classes in Macomb, Michigan. The full project took me just over an hour to color, and this is not a 70 minute video so I cannot show you every step in detail. Just keep in mind that this is a demonstration, not a lesson. There's a big difference between the two. A demo is how one person colors one image. You can learn from them, but it's not the same as a real class. Classes have specific lessons and goals. A class is far more than a demo. The local gummy bear class was two and a half hours of hands-on instruction for people who were very new to Copics. So no, this speedy version here is definitely not a class. The stamp that I'm using today is Your Clawsome by Lawn Fawn. We're using just two little bears from that set, and you can see how I've repeated the bears several times. For class, we stamp the bears onto a quarter sheet of Expressit blending card using Memento's London Fog. But what you're seeing in the video here has been slightly enlarged for the purposes of this demonstration. Everything you see here though can be done on the original stamp size. In fact, it looks better at standard size. See the description down below the video for a link to the printable supply list that I'm using here today. And please be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Your support tells me to keep making more coloring videos. Are you ready? Let's color. I'm starting with Copic V20 and I'm using flick strokes to create soft cast shadows below the bears. We don't want these bears to look like they're floating around in outer space. The shadow helps to ground the bears. It gives them visual weight and presence and something to sit on. I keep my strokes horizontal for cast shadows. As soon as you start fanning them out like spokes on a wagon wheel, then that shadow starts to look like radiation or spilled liquid. Keep the direction horizontal and it will read as a shadow rather than as decoration. Now I've slowed the video down here. This is real time coloring. We're starting to color the bears and we'll do the first couple of bears slow so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I color dark to light almost all of the time. I'm using flick strokes here to better control my ink levels. You can read more about my reasoning and my methods at the article linked above. So that was YG17 in the dark zones, and I'm using YG03 for the lighter blending color, the local color. It's not a highlight color, that will come later. YG03 is the actual color of the gelatin that makes up a gummy bear. Now I'm back with the darker green and what I'm doing is I'm finding the areas where the chest of the bear is being overlapped by something else. So up the top you've got the chin hanging over the chest of the bear. On the side there's a foot from one of the neighboring bears and here there's an arm from this neighboring bear. So I'm picking those areas out with the darker color and flicking that in towards the bear's belly button. There's an area where the foot is overhanging the body of the bear. All of those areas have to be taken darker, deeper, so that they look farther away from us. And those are tiny little flick strokes that I've made with the point of my marker. Now here I'm not using a flick stroke. I'm using the side of my marker in that YG03 to slowly fill and flood the area with the lighter blending ink. Now here's where a lot of colorers go wrong, because they assume that it's your rubbing and your scrubbing and your actual moving the marker back and forth on the paper. They think that that's what makes a blend. It's not. Copic blends happen when you have enough moisture in the area for the inks to blend on their own. Your job is not to rub and scrub. Your job is to flood the zone with color and then get out of the way and let those inks 
blend on their own. So I'm using this flick stroke to very lightly put down my darker color. I'm delicate with the flick stroke. Let's put a little bit of color right on the top of his head there. Okay, now here comes that local blending color. Notice the speed of my stroke is longer. I'm using more of the side of my marker. This is a slower, more leisurely stroke because my job here is not to make pretty flick strokes. My job is to start saturating the paper so that the ink can do its job. Side of the marker, filling the area, getting a nice good coat on, and then I'm not gonna sit there and nurse it back and forth. I'm gonna move on to the next bear. If I need to, I can come back and re-blend the green bear. But while I'm coloring the other bears, the ink is going to self-blend all by itself. All right, so here is my yellow set. And we're going to do two yellow bears. This is Y15, and I put it on the darker side of each of those feet. And now I'm coming in with Y11 as my local color. This is not the highlight color, this is a local color. I do the highlighting with colored pencils. Okay, so there's both feet. Now we're gonna do that chest procedure, where we're going to see where the chest, where the body, is being overlapped by something else. So I found the line right under the chin and now I'm flicking outward because we want that chin to come forward and the neck to go back. Here, we want those legs to come forward and the body to be pushed back. So these are nice little flick strokes. I'm not using a ton of ink here. I'm just getting a bit of darker color down. Darkening the body where the foot overlaps and then right up in here in the armpit there would be some natural darkening there as well Okay, so here is the blending marker the local color Y11 I'm using the side of my marker my strokes have slowed down and I'm making this a juicier process So that the ink can get in there and do the blending for me My only job is to coat the bear's body evenly all right, so let's do a little bit of darkness on his face. I want these bears to have a little muzzle, and that's why I'm coming up on either side of what would be the muzzle with the darker marker. Then I've darkened the bottom of the ear, a little bit of darkness on the head, right where it rolls away from us. And now I need to come down and decide, okay, where's the other side of that bear's muzzle? Flicking upward, those are quicker strokes. A little bit of darkness on the underside of the ear. And now here comes the slow blending process. So this is back with the lighter marker and I'm going over the top of that dark ink to get it nice and wet. And then I'm gonna fill in the whole head using the side of my marker, slower strokes, pressing a little bit harder, but I'm letting the ink get in there and do the work for me. If I were to stroke back and forth, back and forth, trying to coax those blends, I'm going to over ink the paper. I'm going to feed that paper more ink than it can possibly hold. It's not the rubbing and the scrubbing that does the blending. It's just getting it moist enough so that the pigment can move around on the paper. So there we go. A little bit of darkness on either side of the foot blending it out. Notice I'm breaking these bears down into smaller parts. I'm not going to color the head and the body and the feet all at the same time. The smaller you can break it down, the better your blending is going to be because the smaller the area, the more you can keep that wet. Remember, it's the moisture that does the blending, not you. So a little bit of darkness in the armpits. And now here we go. I'm going to find where that neck is and darken that up with some quick flick strokes. And now here comes that blending marker. Slower the side of my marker, inking the paper, and then I'm gonna get out of the way and let those inks blend all on their own. My only job is to get the bear nice and juicy moist. So let's work on the face now and notice I'm rotating my paper. I am most comfortable when I am flicking away from the core of my body. So I turn the paper so that as I'm doing these little muzzle strokes, the marker is moving away from the core of my body. So I'm flicking upward on that face along either side of the muzzle. 
just the underside of the ear where it might pick up a little darkness there and then a little bit on the top of the head between the ears because remember he's got a round head and it's rolling away from us so here's where the blending marker comes in it's going over the top of all of that dark marker and then I'm going to come out beyond where that darkness is to fill in the whole entire head there we go, just moistening up that head so that the inks can blend on their own. Now I've sped the footage up here, but the only thing that has changed about my process here is that I'm using an orange marker instead of yellow or green. The process is exactly the same. I've got a little dark color on the outside edge of each foot. I've got the local color that I'm using to blend it out, color under the chin, color on the body behind the foot, a little bit in the armpits, blending it out with the side of my marker using the local color as the blending color. Here we come with that muzzle process, up one side and the ear, up the other side and the ear, a little bit on the head. Side of the marker, slower stroke to blend it out, feed the paper enough moisture and it'll blend on its own. Reds here, that's a little bit more challenging because red is a stubborn ink. It grabs a hold of the paper a little bit more. So to be quite honest, my red blends are never quite as good as some of my other blends. It's just a stubborn marker. It holds onto the paper fibers and it doesn't want to blend. I tend to give reds a little bit more juice than any of my other colors. So if you flip my project over, the back is a little darker on a red project than it would be on, let's say, a blue project but my method is exactly the same. Put that dark color down, blend it out with the local color. So here are my naked bears. I've completed the Copic and I'm about to move on to adding details with fine line pens and I'll highlight and shade the bears with colored pencils. But first, I want you to look at my naked bears. Look at the blends. One of the biggest mistakes that colorers make is to look at someone else's finished project and assume that their blends are perfect. Look, my blends are not perfect. Now granted, these bears are really magnified here. They're about three quarters of an inch tall in real life, so we're zooming in here far more than anyone would do in normal life. But my blends are not perfect. About the worst thing you can do to yourself and your psyche is to hold yourself to an unrealistic standard for blending. We are not computers. We cannot create those super smooth color gradients that only computers can do. When you look up close at my projects, sometimes the blends are better than others, but even on my best day, I'm nowhere close to computer perfect blending. And if you're a beginner, the fastest way to feel really crummy about yourself is to expect unrealistic perfection. Lighten up. It's okay. We can fix these blends with our pencils. So here we go with a Statler Tri Plus Fine Line Pen, and I'm using these in various colors to match the bear. I'm basically just masking out the gray of the stamp by going over it with a concentrated ink of the same color. So now the eyes and the noses don't feel as if they're gray anymore. And here's where I'm starting some of that shading process. This is a Prismacolor pencil. I like Prismacolor pencils because they're nice and waxy and that attaches, it adheres well to the marker paper that I'm using, which by the way is Expressit blending card. So here we go. I'm just using that pencil to deepen some of these areas some of those areas where I originally put in some of that YG17, I'm going over it with the Prussian Green pencil just to deepen it, giving him a little bit of a rump there that you can see through his belly. And now I'm going to come up here and darken just the top of the face where the top of the muzzle would be. So now I'm pulling out my shade and my highlight colors. It's the first time in this project that I will have shaded and it's the first time that I'm highlighting. So I used indigo blue to add bits of actual darkness to the bear. And then here comes the highlight. It's a bit of white Prismacolor pencil right where the light would hit the gelatin of the gummy bear. So there's a little bit on the top of the muzzle, a little bit over the eyes, a little bit on the top of the head, Bit of belly that's catching the light and I'm going to go through with each one of these bears 
and continue to color sculpt them to improve the color that I put down with the Copic. The pencil adds a bit of mm, butteriness. I guess that's really the best way to describe it. Colored pencil looks buttery on the paper, whereas dried Copic marker can look a little bit dry. So this adds some depth to the color, some interest to the color, especially since like right here, I'm using a purple pencil over the top of an orange bear. And then here's the highlighting process. I'm not going crazy with a white gel pen. I'm just pulling some areas a little bit closer where the sun would hit it and pushing some areas a little bit deeper where the sun would not naturally be able to penetrate. Little belly on that bear, just for a little extra cuteness there. Every single bear is done the same exact way. I'm pushing and pulling with these pencils to increase the depth and the dimension that I started with the Copics. Now I'm working with stamped bears. I did not draw these bears, I bought these bears. But that doesn't excuse me from not consulting photo references to get the best gummiest looking bears that I can possibly create. So I did deliberately go looking for photo references. And the photo references determined some of my color choices. And I'm also looking at that photo reference as I do this process right now so that I can see, well, just how white is the highlight area. If you look at photo references, you find out it's not usually as white as you think. And the shade usually isn't quite as deep as you think it is either. So my Copic choices and my colored pencil choices in color, as well as where I place them, it's all determined by what I find in photo references. When you download the supply guide for this project, you'll see a very simplified supply list. Every bear has three colored pencils assigned to it. There's a main color, so like the green bear got a green pencil and the red bear gets a red one. And we use those to improve the shape of the bear with a bit of color sculpting. Then there's the shade color, and the shade color is that weird one. Dark blue on the green bear, purple on orange. The shade color is there to provide the darker, murky color that hangs out only in the shadiest of areas. And then there's the highlight color. In this case, we're using white. And you'll notice there's a lot more color on these bears than there is white. Take it easy on the white pens and pencils. I know it's fun to add highlights. You can get carried away with it. But if you want to add realism, you can't add a ton of highlighter. The final step for my bears here is to make them appear translucent because they're gummy bears, not teddy bears. We want them to look clear. If you look in the photo reference, a yellow gummy bear doesn't turn completely orange when he has a red bear behind him. No, the gummy bear is always going to be yellow, no matter what color he's in front of. To get the look of transparency, you can't just suddenly grab a different marker and make that part of the bear a new color. It might look cool, but it doesn't look real. Instead, I'm using pencils to add hints of what's behind the bear through the original color. So where the yellow bear overlaps the green bear, he's still a yellow bear. You can just see hints of the green bear behind him. And where the yellow bear is overlapping this red bear, I'm not coloring him orange all of a sudden. Instead, I'm using a red pencil to add the missing parts of the red bear through the yellow bear but I'm never trying to hide or disguise the yellowness of the front bear. That's what's going to give you the look of transparency rather than an object just suddenly turning into something else because another bear passed behind it. So from here on out, I'm just adding details. I'm playing with my pencils. This red bear is sitting next to a yellow bear, so I'm assuming a little bit of yellow light might bounce onto the red bear and the green bear. Here's a little bit of green, bounced light coming from the green bear onto his neighbors. When I play with colors like this, it's me just messing around and having fun, but it's also adding artistry. It makes my coloring a little bit different than everyone else's. Play, have fun. And there you go, shiny and translucent gummy bears using beginner blending technique and simple pencil details. 
be sure to download the printable supply list linked below. It has all the colors for every flavor of gummy bear. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to color again with you soon.